Hey, and welcome back. This is Dr. Dave. As you know, one of my top 10 health-related behaviors is sleep. Sleep on it. I'm reminded of this today because of an article that came across my desk earlier this morning uh, that basically found uh, if you don't sleep well, you're more likely to be constipated. I mean, who uh, saw that one coming? It did get me to thinking about some of the other uh, negative consequences of poor sleep. Of course, in the short run, it's going to interfere with your ability to uh, concentrate and focus and perform effectively in this, the digital age. It's going to compromise function across the board, work at home, and even in your interpersonal and social relationships. Uh, in the longer term, of course, it wreaks havoc on all of your organ systems and can lead to early death. That's right, if you don't sleep well, you're more likely to die of anything when you get to be my age and older. I'm just gonna hit you over the head with some studies. This one was very uh, fascinating to me. It's a pretty old study, but what it found is that even after 19 hours of being awake consecutively, that's a typical day for many of us, but 19 hours of wakefulness you operate, you perform with respect to fine motor skills and making decisions with imperfect information as if you were legally intoxicated. That's right, even being awake all day makes you a little bit punch drunk. More studies, this one was a research project that looked at 14,000 male Japanese shift workers over eight years huge study and what they found at the end of that study if you worked a rotating shift alternating between night and day shifts you were four times more likely to get prostate cancer and in other such studies people who didn't sleep well were much more likely to have breast cancer or colon cancer what about diabetes well this is a study of 161 african-american uh, adults and they found that your sleep quality and amount more than your BMI, your body mass index, more than your waist to hip ratio, more than the frequency of exercise, frequency of glucose monitoring, duration of diabetes, right? So more than all of those things, how well you slept determined your glycemic control, the control of your blood sugars. In fact, the authors of this study said, and I quote, the prevalence of sleep curtailment may be a contributing factor to the current epidemic of type 2 diabetes. Get your sleep. All right. What about in us older folks? Well, if you don't sleep well, you die earlier of all causes. And it's really two parameters that people are looking at with respect to quality of sleep. And the first is what we call sleep latency. How long does it take you to fall asleep? And if it takes you more than 30 minutes to fall asleep on a routine basis, you're going to die, sucker. It's really that simple of anything. The other measure of sleep quality has to do with sleep efficiency. That would be how much of the time you're in bed, you're actually asleep. So it would be time asleep as the numerator, uh, time in bed as the denominator, and that needs to be 80%. So 80% of the time that you're in bed, um, unless you're, well, I won't say that, but you need to be asleep. What else? What about adolescents? I just talked a little bit about people my age. You know, if you don't sleep well, and about 9% of adolescents report that they do not sleep well, it doubles your risk of binge drinking, smoking cigarettes, using marijuana, right? Almost two times more likely if you don't sleep well as an adolescent to engage in those behaviors. More worrisome even than that would be almost three times more likely to use other drugs to meet criteria for clinical depression and almost two and a half times more likely to be suicidal if you don't sleep well as an adolescent. Other studies, I don't know, I find them interesting. This was 68,000 women followed for 16 years. This was the famous nurses study and what they determined that if you sleep less on average, fewer than six hours per night, you have a, an increased risk of future weight gain and obesity. All right, here's another study. I kind of like this, even though it's out of the University of Michigan and I'm obviously an Ohio State Buckeye, but this showed that if you increase your sleep by one hour every night, no kidding, just increase your sleep by one hour every night, you are likely to eat 6% less, which could translate into losing up to 14 pounds in a year, right? 
All right, here we go. Napping. What's the word on that? This was a study of nearly 24,000 Greek adults. These numbers are huge. We just don't get that kind of research data. Taking at least three 30-minute naps per week was associated with a 37% lower risk of heart disease related death over the following six years. So maybe napping is good. What about your immune system? Well, we know that if you do not sleep well, you are at risk for viral and other infections. Right? Animals deprived of sleep die early. Why? Because they have systemic infections. We know that sleep deprivation not only makes you more likely to become infected with the virus, but it's also more likely to be associated with that cytokine, cytokine storm that you're reading about probably on news outlets, right? So is it the virus or is it your own idiosyncratic immune reaction to the virus that ends up being so difficult uh, for one to process? Um, and then of course sleep deprivation cancels some of the benefits of our treatments for infections including viruses, okay? And then probably as scary uh, as anything to me is that even after one night of poor sleep, you have in measurable increases in beta amyloid plaques. That's a mighty big expression for a psychiatrist. What does that mean? Well, those are the brain pathologies, the abnormalities in your brain that's associated with Alzheimer's. That's after just one night of poor sleep, you have measurable increases in that protein in your brain. Moreover, after just one week of bad sleep, you have increases in another protein associated with Alzheimer's, that's those neurofibrillary tangles, phosphorylated tau proteins, whatever you want to call them. Just trust me on this, I am a doctor. Poor sleep increases measurably those things that are associated with Alzheimer's, leading researchers to conclude poor sleep in the decades of the 40s and 50s increases your risk of Alzheimer's earlier than otherwise would be expected. All right, in summary, in the short run, sleep deprivation inebriates you, intoxicates you. In the long run, it shortens your life and health span. So whether that's from endogenous uh, internal kinds of conditions, such as increases in cortisol and stress hormones, or whether it's got to do with externalities, right, those things outside of our systems, Either way, it's associated with increased oxidative stress and inflammation, and those are the things then that wear out all of your circuitry. Okay, what do you do about it? Well, I've already eclipsed as much time as I want to spend with you today. I love you, don't get me wrong. But for now, what I recommend is you tune back in and I'll get to uh, a couple of, of videos on sleep hygiene and then of course, natural ways of promoting healthy sleep. All right, that's all I got, sleep on it. In the meantime, Stay safe and be sane. Be safe and stay sane. I like that better. All right, I'll see you. Bye.